hello it's Sarah and this is a votive that I just finished well yesterday I did it and there's a tutorial coming up following this little introduction I just wanted to show you with uh, I have one of those electric votives in here battery operated so it's a bit different I was gonna do this is my big one I'll turn my big light on um, it's interesting the different feel that a, doing it so tiny because um, on this one so just uh, let me come in a little bit I love it I think it's adorable but just FYI it's a long tutorial um, I go into things that some of you may want to just skip right over just skip over I do a little clay intro some tools about the tools I use and then I did this um, blending technique for the background you don't need to do it once you put everything on here you don't even notice that it's got a blended background because we texturize and we antique it um, what else I wouldn't have put all these leaves covering all the brickwork that we did either so less is more um, I ended up adding the curtains at the end and I don't think I showed that but listen use your imagination do I'm just showing you how I do it you I this is a mold this butterfly is a mold you can cut it out by hand you don't need fancy schmancy stuff um, but I just happen to have this these big flowers or mold a mold I have what else um and then I use cookie cutters to cut the extra little holes all around because it's a votive and I chose to do a votive just to change it up because I have this one's going to be used in my fairy garden <clears throat> I did the other one with um, a baby food uh, jar and I did a lid I did the lid so it can screw off but um, you know make it your own I just wanted to share the techniques and how I get I cover the glass votive with um, the clay all right so I think that's about it um, I just wanted to uh, tell you it is long I do it in real time so just forward through anything that you you don't need to see. but I love it I think it turned out super cute and I think I'll probably make another one because I have to perfect it you know I want to continue and and make it better and better but I love I changed it up and I did the shutters and so listen like I said use your imagination add little things you could put a fence OMG I just thought of that I could put a fence with flowers coming up from it so there's a million things you could do all right so I hope you enjoy it and thanks for watching hello it's Sarah and today I'm gonna be doing a tutorial for this fairy house that I made it's not going to be exactly like this but some version of this I'm gonna do it a bit smaller and we're gonna wrap this votive with polymer clay and make it look like a cute little fairy house so I wanted to talk about some of the things that I use when I work with polymer clay and I use Primo or Sculpey 3 Primo is a brand of Sculpey. It's Sculpey, but it's a bit stiffer. Um, this is much softer. So polymer clay is uh, the type of clay that needs to be baked. So on the packaging, it tells you for the Primo, it's 275 for 30 minutes per quarter inch. And on the Sculpey, it's 275 for 15 minutes per quarter inch so this takes a bit may, maybe a little quicker to cook to bake um, but that's what I use so I you get it in these little and I've been trying not to open any fresh clay because I'll show you why in here this is all open clay I have a lot a lot a lot a lot of clay that is still good because until you bake it it's usable um, so I just put it in baggies the black bags and kind of like there's mixes in here this is cool wow this has like gold in it 
I think there's gold foiling in this mixed up in here that I used on a different project. Um, a lot of times I was doing um, applique, which is just using tiny pieces of clay. So I would just have one little bag, like say this bag, I could do my whole project. So that's all the clay you needed, but it, it's a bunch of different colors. So I just keep that in here. And for today, you're only going to need maybe five colors, if that. So if you need some clay, I'll keep this out. Um, you can just go by, I would say, I'm going to set this aside for a second. Uh, let's look at this one. I actually mixed a little bit of brown and a little bit of gold or copper, a metallic clay, to make this background color. Um, this is red glitter clay. I'm out of it, but this is like a granite colored gray, and I love this for my stones, but I don't ha I have like a tiny piece left. I was looking all over this morning, but I don't have any more. So I'll just use a different color clay. Um, and then greens, lots of, lots of greens because it's, it's a fairy house out in the garden. So I put a vine around it and, um, what else? Any colors that you want for flowers. I always include a little bit of flowers. So what I have, and this is just a little example of some colors. I found this, like, this is a Sculpey color, and it's, let's say, hot pink. Um, this is a blend of two glitters. It's a dark blue glitter and a red glitter that I just mushed together to make purple. Probably need a little bit of black. And then I love to have metallics. Meta like here's all my greens. I have a lot of different color greens in here. So I'll use different ones for the vines and different color leaves. It just, it just adds to the, to the depth of the piece. Like on here, I think I just did two different color leaves. So there's the bright, bright green and the, and the darker green. But you can use as many colors as you want. In the grass, I actually blended a couple colors, but we're gonna use, after it's baked, so I have browns and metallics. I love to have, um, for the hardware and stuff, some gold, Some I found my silver today, so I have silver. This is antique gold. I think this is copper. This is just called hazelnut. I might mix some of that with some, and this is just like an antique gold too. This is the antique gold. So yeah, so, and a little bit of black just for details. This is just another pretty green. I really, I just opened that last night. So I have, because I don't have, this is called wasabi, and it's a very popular color. Um, so, all right, and then, oh, let me, might as well, just for you beginners out there, I know lots of you who have done clay, know all about this stuff but I also have some tools and I keep them in this little pencil case and there are all types of tools out there on the market and you do not need any of them because you can use your hands and a toothpick you know or you know you probably do need a roller so I have this acrylic roller or a pasta machine and I have a pasta machine they're actually called um, it's a clay machine now. If you go to the clay department in the craft store, it'll be, uh, it's usually on the bottom or somewhere there. But they're very, very good for making consistent uh, widths. You know, a little thin, you can make a sheet of clay in different widths. So, and I can't get it in the shot because it's screwed to my table and it's over there. But um, just Google pasta machine. Or, you know, look it up on YouTube. You'll, you'll see what I mean. But you can always just use a roller like this, an acrylic roller or a rolling pin. You need a blade. And I have several. I think these are, and listen, I don't know the names of all this stuff or where to get it. Google it. Or Amazon. Go to Amazon and put polymer clay tools. You know, and all this stuff comes up. So I've had a lot of it for years, too. So... I don't remember exactly where I got them or, you know, use your X-Acto knife. I love just the simple X-Acto knife to cut your leaves out. Um, this is like a ball tool. Ball tools are excellent too. I've had these in my stash forever because for painting, we used to trace the design with a, a, a stylus or a ball tool. 
Um, and I have this really little one. This is by Sculpey, I think. Um, a straw. You can use that to make, you know, little curvy lines and make texture. Um, a pointy tool is always good to have. Something with a point on it, you know. All right, or a toothpick. And I like these toothpicks because I do my, um, here's a plastic tool. This is very good because it's not too sharp. So you can make a nice line with it, but you don't cut the clay. Because I'm so rough, I tend to do that. So that's it. I, I mean, listen, this is just a quick overview. Um, but like I said, there are a lot of other videos out there. So um, have a look at those and see what you think. So the first thing we're going to do is cover this. And I think I'm going to do this like a votive. I'm going to keep it as a votive so you could put a candle inside of it. I haven't done one like that yet, so I think I want to. The other ones I've done upside down, so that's your choice if you want to do it upside down so that it has a roof and everything like mine did. I just, this is a votive. It's an oval, an oblong votive, but it is a votive glass jar. And you can use a ball jar. This is, um, you can make a tiny one. This is from the dollar spot at Target. A baby food jar, a, anything, anything at all, a glass. Oopsie. <laughs> Duh, didn't know, don't know why I didn't think that would happen. Um, but yeah, anything, you can cover, you can put the glass in the oven because it's only at 275. It's not going to burn it or break it. Um, you're going to be fine with that. And I like the idea of the glass because I'm going to figure out a way to do a stained glass look on these and have, um, you know, I mean, it's just more detail to add, you know. Um... All right, so the first thing, like I said, I'm going to grab my tile. Where is my tile? Over here. I have this, oh, Kirby's on my, I mean, Kiwi's on my shoulder. She's my little bird. I have, this is about a 12 by 12, I want to say, right? Yeah, 11 and a half by 11 and a half. But clay is um, sticky. It can get sticky, so something that you can um, work on that's glass preferably or a tile is always good to have and I bake on a tile as well oh one thing I forgot to mention cookie cutters these are you know just so you don't have you can just use your exacto knife and cut all your shapes but I have these so I'm gonna use them so pull some cookie cutters this is the big leaf shape that I used on my my big one I have flower shapes all different shapes so you can you know play around and see I mean you can embed metal jewelry pieces in the clay you can it's a there's a million things you can do um, but for this one because I am gonna um, make it into a votive I might use some like flower shapes I think I'm gonna cut a bunch of flower shapes in the side of it so that the light will shine through and it'll just look like you know I don't I don't care what it looks like I love it oh here's my little leaf I love that I'm gonna use that he was excited what are you wagging your tail for look here she is why are you so happy all right whatever she took a bath this morning so she's a little bit wet um I have stars diamonds anything goes oh teardrops Hearts. Hearts are always good. Can't go wrong with a heart. All right, so what else? I think that's it. Now, I really, really, really love the color of my last piece that I did. So I'm going to shoot for that again. And to do that, I'm going to use some brown clay. That's actually really dark. And some of this, I think it's copper. And how about this? This is going to be cool because, so I'm just going to take these three colors and get your clay soft. Clay needs to be conditioned, they say. So if you, well, I've taken classes and what they say is there are polymers inside here, which are bits of plastic and that's what hardens. And you need to get them moving. You need to keep them, I don't know. I don't know the science of it. I just know that you got to do it. So I'm warming this up with my hands. And I'm just creating these little log shapes. 
and then once we do that we're going to roll them all together and twist them up and get them to blend and I, I got to try not to over blend because that's my that tends to be what happens and if you just have one color of brown you're going to be fine so this may be just for the advanced player who has a couple colors just pull whatever you have like I really kind of want to add this color I don't think I have any of this <clears throat> Gee, what are you doing what are you doing she keeps coming down my arm and she's very excited why are you so excited because I'm talking is that why all right so this should make for an interesting color I'm gonna put this on top of the brown and then we're just going to roll it together. And air bubbles are an issue with polymer clay. You don't really want air bubbles. I never, I don't take anything serious, not seriously, but like if it happens, it happens. Don't worry about anything. Just have fun. So look at that. That is awesome. And then I'm going to just roll it up again. And we're going to create these like striations of color. Oh man, it's marbleizing. So I don't think I want to go much further. I think that's it. And then I'm going to start putting it through my pasta machine. And I use, Kiwi, hold on because I want to take off my sweatshirt. I use the one of the thinner settings on my pasta machine. And it usually goes from 0 to 10. And they're, they're all different, like 10 might be the widest on some machines and it might be the thinnest on others. So whichever setting on yours is the thinnest, hmm. I think I'm going to stop here and I'm going to put this through. And I lost a lot of the brown because I only put one piece of brown in. I don't want more brown, but I think I'm going for it. I'm just going to show you what happens. So I put that through my pasta machine and see what you start to get. I'm going to fold. I don't want to lose the brown. I'm going to fold it this way because we need it to be, and this is not the, th the thinnest setting yet. Oh, I like that side. So now I'm going to go down a bit thinner. Oh, that's pretty. I don't think I have enough clay. So you're going to probably need a half a... Yeah, this isn't going to go all the way around, but man, is that pretty. What should I do? I think I'm going to do another, um, another thing like that. So I'll be back. I just, I want to make a big enough sheet that it's going to go all the way around. Look how pretty that's going to be already. And we haven't added any details. So I need more clay. I need about the same amount of clay that I just did. All right, so I'll be back. All right, I over blended this one. And that's just going to happen, you guys. Don't worry about stuff. Like, I'm not a professional clayer. So, you know, that's why you're not paying for this class. <laughs> but look, I'm not going to overblend this because it's just gorgeous. And then this piece that I overblended will just be the back. Or maybe it should just be the front. <gasps> That's a great idea. Or I should make another piece. So anyway, here's what we're going to do. You're going to put this on, and for me, I want the top to be covered. I'm going to put little petals, I think, up there. But I want it to reach the edge is what I'm saying. So I'm going to start laying this down in the middle and then gently push it down because you want the air bubbles to come out if there are any under there. So gently push it in the shape of the globe and hopefully any air bubbles will come right out. That feels really good right now. And we'll cut the edge away so don't worry about any folding or anything like that. But just get it on there and look how gorgeous. OMG, that is so pretty. So I think I might try again one more time to get it to look like this. Because why not? I have a lot of clay and this is over blended. I could put it on there and put the door. 
I don't want to though. I want to I want to make it It's going to be a trying to make this a little longer. Cuz if I put my door there and then a lot of decorations, you won't even notice it. That is so cool. <laughs> I'm going to try it again. All right, I have to try it again. So let's see. I'm going to take like two pieces of this. And who knows if I'll be able to do it. I want dark brown, like this color. This is an, oh, this one. Yeah. So one, at least two pieces of that. And then a couple pieces of this. Or this, at least one piece of this. And what else? Uh, this may be a little piece of this, just since I have it here. Alright, let's try it again. Shall we? This might not be enough clay. Now, this is like, uh, trial and error for me still. I'm not, um, with blends and stuff. Like, I'm, I'm not into canes yet. Like, there's a lot of clay stuff I have not explored. So, I'm just a beginner in a lot of ways, but sh making shapes and sculpting or whatever, this is not hard. You can do it. You just, you know, have to try. Oh, that's not gonna... You really do have to get it warm. All right, so let's see. Um, is this going to be enough is the question. That is the question, my dear. So I'm just going to roll it into one big log. And you know what I didn't do last time? The twist. I think the twist is very important. So twist, yes. Twisting is important. And then fold it over and do it again. And I think that might be all I'm going to do. Because I don't want to lose it. I think I'll fold it in half and then I'll put it through the pasta machine. Go into my big wide setting right now. So you don't want to break your machine with a big hunk of clay. Well, let's go smaller, little by little. Aha! I think we got it. I think that might fit on the other side. And at least I have a similar... Yep, it'll fit. So we're going to do the same thing. Just lay it across in the middle and start pushing the air bubbles out if there are any. So you see there's an air bubble right in the middle. So just put, get it out of there. And like I said, I want mine to come all the way to the top, but you can patch it and I'm also going to put petals up there. I'm going to put something on the top, like a decorative section. Just seeing if I, I think there are air bubbles in the middle. You can also cut a hole, just like a little slit in the clay to make it, uh, to, put, to get the air bubble out. So gently, this is a thin sheet of clay. And if there's folds, we can cut that away too, or blend it in. Alright, now I'm getting to where the other part is. So I'm going to start to cut. And then we're going to patch a little bit. So I'm just going to cut right here. And take that off. And then take this off. And connect the two. And you just simply use your finger and smooth it out. And push down. Okay. 
Okay, we're going to cut this. Just take your blade and just cut it right across the rim. Pretty easy. Yeah, and they look totally different. So ideally, you would like to make a piece of clay that's big enough to fit around your votive. One piece. Um, you know, and I just, because I'm filming, of course, but I'm going to cut this. This is what I'm going to fill with. Fill in any nooks and crannies that are... Uh, open and then once we add all the stuff this is not this isn't going to show it's not going to matter you know it's just all the good all the best stuff you could do just do it to your best is all I'm saying you know you don't need to it doesn't have to be perfect but it's less stuff to worry about later look I kind of crushed it there I don't know what I was doing but I got fingerprints and then we're going to texturize this anyway so and I have I happen to have texture sheets like these I keep calling them texture sheets I don't know if they're called texture sheets but I call them texture sheets oops so I'm going to take a piece of this Put it right there. I like to hold this from the inside of the jar as much as possible. So I'm going to go away. I'm going to keep adding clay and smoothing it out. And I'll be back when it's all ready for the next step. All right? So listen, just it doesn't even like on the bottom of mine because I'm doing a votive I'm gonna have I'm gonna sit it on something like I'll probably put a grass mound under it so this doesn't have to be perfect all right I'll be right back okay so the next thing I have this all covered and yeah it doesn't look um, consistent you know and I think I am gonna do this as the front although I don't know I can't decide the next thing we're going to do is texturize that. Now, you don't have to texturize it. We have all this cool stuff going on. Or you can use stamps. Like, I actually do have a brick stamp. I don't know where it is at the moment. It's in my mixed media stuff. Um, so, yeah, you can use, like, this type of... Anything that will make a mark. Here's my brick stamp. Well, this is the... You know... So if you wanted to go around it with that and create some texture, I'm just going to use, I have these, and these are, um, I call them texture sheets. Let's see what it says on here. Macon's Clay, Made in China. Um, but anyway, this one, oh wait, this one, where is it? <laughs> I'm sorry, the cobblestone one. So it says right up here, cobblestone. Okay, so it's just a plastic embossing folder. Oh, embossing folders probably. You probably definitely have something in an embossing folder, right? And I'm just going to take it and lay it down and start to press this into it. And just, oh, I have to charge my battery. All right, sorry. <laughs> I just looked up and my machine was telling me something. I'm just plugging her in. Um... So I get this. You see that? And it doesn't have to match up. It can be here and there. And actually down the bottom, I'm going to cover with grass. So it's not that you don't need it there. So just start going around all over the place, here and there, everywhere. And make some texture. And I like it when a little bit of flat areas are in there, too. It just adds to the... All right, so look, I have... And I'm going to cut a piece out for my door anyway. So you can, you can even take it like this and just hold it and press down where you want it. 
to get it where you want it if you missed a spot. Alright, we're going to do the same thing to the door. I'm going to use my um, wood grain. Probably, you probably have a wood grain embossing folder. A lot of you um, scrapbookers. And I've chosen this uh, purple clay. This is, just in case you want to know, purple, doesn't say, I think it's a purple pearl. And I just rolled it out. It's it's pretty thin. Let me see. I'm gonna make it a little thinner. Cause that way when I bake this, this isn't thick because I'm gonna put it on top of the alright, and then we're gonna take this uh, wood grain sheet and lay it on there. Actually I think I want it to go this way. Yeah. Um and just take my rolling pin sometimes you have to loosen the clay with your blade just go under and it's just got some texture on it I mean it might not be perfect so now I'm gonna make a straight edge on the bottom and we're gonna just cut out a door shape with my exacto knife let me see how big I want it. I'm probably going to start the door right here. So I'm probably just going to do it about an inch and a half. I think I'm going to do it about an inch and a half. And I like this over here. So I like to make them a little bit oval. Like it's a fantasy world, right? You don't have, that's why I love doing this type of, um, creating because it's it's not realism um, do I want to do this or this I'm gonna do it on this side and I'm just gonna set it down in the center and just tap it down it'll stick to the other clay but that is see it's at least it's not quite a quarter it's probably a quarter of an inch and then the next thing I'm going to do, and I'm just going to, I'm not going to use this again, but see when you look at it flat, I don't see the door very much. I might want to raise it up a little bit. Do you see what I'm saying? Like when it's flat on the table, there's a lot down here and I'm going to put a step. Uh, do I want to raise it up? Nope. I'm going to leave it. Oh, no, 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 because we have to put bricks around it. All right. Now, this is just white. I've been using the pearl white, but I thought, why waste the pearl? And I'm just going to use a piece of this white scrap and make a snake. And I'm going to line the door with that. My door is a little fat, too. Yeah, it's fine. Um, this is soft. I can tell it's Sculpey. Not Sculpey 3 or Primo. I mean, it's Sculpey 3. It's not Primo. And I'm just rolling out a snake. And you know what else you can do? I want to show you another way to do this. I like, if you want your um, clay to be like, this is how I did it on my big one. It was square. It kind of looked like wood. I'll show you. It's a little too thin. I want it to be a little thicker. why I love the pasta machine because and I know this is white on white but I'm going to cut it like this and that way it's like a little piece of wood and I'm just going to lay it next to the door and I'm going to cut it even and I'm going to cut it at the top and then I'll do another one and just tap it down. We'll do another one. Try to make it the same width. I need to get my hair band. I know I'm sticking my head in the shot. Just cut uh, the top straight and then stick that right up against 
this part and walk it around the door. cut it. I like it to be snug. And then cut that. But that's how I like to do it. But you could just roll a snake. A snake would be fine. Then I've chosen this. I found this in my stash. It's just a piece of, I think it's been blended because I told you I ran out of the, um, the granite colored. So I'm going to use this for my stone. And I'm going to just put that through the pasta machine in the same thickness as the white was. And I'm going to use my X-Acto knife and make little bricks. And what am I trying to do? I want to make a flat edge to start with. And just start putting different shapes. Oops. Of course, I'm on camera, so it never is good. So you're just going to start placing them up against the edge. I'll come in a little closer. And when when we um, antique this, it's all going to pop. So and you can make your edges rough, like these are bricks. They're not, and you can make them crooked, tall, and fat or short. Any, any style you want until you get to the top you kind of have to curve them a little so you just start placing the bricks and they, it sticks it sticks to the clay so don't you don't need glue I never use glue and a lot of people do they use liquid Sculpey but see how that looks Alright, so I'm just going to continue around the whole door that way, and I'll be back. So when you get to the top, I'll show you what I mean by, it just turns. So you're going to have to cut your bricks, so straight on one side, and then a little bit more curved on that side. And I'll show you why, because it's just going to make them fit onto this curve. So you push it into place and see now it can be straight on that side, but maybe a little curved on the other side. And you can always trim it and cut it and make it fit. So see, I'm kind of making the, I, when I say curve, I mean crooked, not curve. This can be kind of straight. So I'm going to put it right at the top. and that's not really snug up to the white like I like it and then a little bit of a I'm gonna do a short one so this is right on top so that can be but see how like this has like a diagonal and a diagonal right so I'm gonna go diagonal diagonal. Hopefully I eyeballed it right and it'll fit. It's a little off but I'll squish it down. See? Alright so that's done and we could have even textured the clay for that too like by I think I did it on that one I used the sand texture sheet and it just had little pits in it. But you could do that with a, a uh, like a pokey tool too. Let me grab a pokey tool of some type and just show you like, you know, you could just do little, am I, what, am I coming in here? I don't want the camera to move because when we antique this, they'll, all the black paint will kind of gather in those little parts. I mean, it takes more time and, but see, this is for me and I like it and I don't have anything going on today <laughs> so I can make a few little marks and I'm just making them here and there kind of in different parts of the tie of the um, block 
like to the left of some, to the right, on the bottom, on the top. All right. Now I want to, I forgot, but I want to make these um, on the door. I want to give it this, oops, this crossbar that goes across the door. So again, I'm going to take that same color that do, the door was and put it through the pasta machine. And I'm not going to do it too thick. I'm going to go down one because we'll get the same look and it doesn't have to make the clay so thick. I'm going to texturize it with my wood grain. Do I want to go across? I'll go down this time. And it didn't pick it up everywhere because I'm not pushing super hard. Let me take it off the tile first. And then just cut a straight line. And I think I'm going to put two. I'm not going to make them that big. I could probably get two out of that, but just in case. And I want to put a hole in the, on the wind. I'm going to make a window. See, that's the thing. If I put a window, usually the window is at the top. So I'm just going to put these at the very, so I can definitely make two out of one. I'm going to put this at the very top and bottom, and then I'll put a window. Yeah, it'll be okay. So I'm just going to cut it straight and go across at the top. Let me do the bottom first because I might want to angle it a little bit. And the top. And just brush down that. You can't see it as well, but when we antique it, that's when it all starts to pop. I want to put um, a window, I think. So let's see. I have this little heart. Maybe, maybe just a circle. <gasps> Ooh, the straw might make a tiny little circle. It's too small. So this is my smallest circle. I have a star. Okay, I'm going to do a circle. And I'm going to put it right there. And you know what? I want to, I'm going to line the window too. So I'm going to go down a little bit and make sure there's enough room between that to and I push now this is a couple couple layers of clay are in there so I just turn it and it's in there so see now I have a window it's a little low but hey it's a fairy garden um, a fairy house right and just pop that out so see that's how thick it is that's not too bad so when we bake that's under a quarter inch so it's just just so I know how long to bake it I'm going to line the window with the white and I'm going to put a little strip of white underneath here. I also want to get, what color hinges do we want? Oh, silver. I have, I just found the silver, so I'm going to put silver hinges and a little door knocker. Um, all right, so I'm going to go away and prepare the clay and then I'll be right back. So to do the window, I just rolled out a thin piece of clay like this is kind of probably maybe the thinnest and I'm going to just do the same thing I did with the door. I'm going to start at the top. It's hard to do on camera but I hope I'm in the shot. And I'm outside, well let me come in. I put some under the door already. So you just take it I'm going to put
push it down where I want it, push it down. Then walk it around and I have this cool tool here. Kind of push it up against the circle in the center. Just do your best, you know. And I'm actually probably making a mark on the back with my, because I have it sitting. It's sticky. Now this white, I think, is Sculpey. And Sculpey is way stickier and softer than um, Primo. So that's why, I mean, it's going to stick to you a little bit. But it sticks to itself. That's what I love. Just coaxing it into a curve. It's not going to be perfect. And when you get it, Good enough. You take your exacto. Uh, have I not even been in the shot? Oh, you bet. so soft. Am I in the shot? Sorry. I keep pulling it toward me to see it. Okay. So that looks pretty good. Fudge it a little bit. Alright, so we got that. The next thing I want to do is make some, uh, I got the silver kind of warm now. And, um, going to make this really thin, so I'm going into my thinnest setting and lay it down and then I'm going to make two hinges I think this time. So another, I need a straight edge on the bottom and I'm just going to go make triangles. One, it's kind of fat on the bottom and then I'm going to do a tiny little do I want a diamond or just a, I think a diamond. I don't know. All right, and you can just pick it up like this and sometimes it'll come out. This is gonna be for my door knocker. It's not very straight. I'll make it a little straighter, okay. And this is my hinges, which it's a little wide. trying to get it straight up against the white and you could even put a piece on the white because hinges that's what it's connected to but this goes underneath anyway and then this one again you could texturize this before you cut it you should texturize because if you don't you'll contort it it'll get um, squished out of shape and this is where the door knobs gonna go Oopsie. I don't know how you guys who have manicures do this stuff. Like, I've had the um, acrylic nails before, and I love them. They're gorge, but because, because I make things almost every day, I can't do it because they're, I can't grab things with them. All right, good. Good enough. So see, and when we antique this, oh man, it's going to look so good. You can put a little screw hole here, screw hole there, wherever you want, because the black paint is going to, and then I put one in all four corners of this, and then we're going to do a little knocker. I'll do a part two, I guess, because this is getting long. Um, to do the knocker, I think I'm going to change it up and go 
black. Yeah, I'm gonna use a piece of black. It just it'll just show up better. Um, and then I'll use maybe I'll use silver rub and buff on top of it. But I'm gonna do the same thing because I want this to be square. So I just put it through the pasta machine. And then I'm gonna cut a thin strip right here. And then this is gonna create my, it's a little too thin, I think. I want it to be a little thicker, sorry. Sorry, I'm gonna go up one notch on the pasta machine. It'll just hold together better if it's a little thicker. So make a strip of clay like that. And basically, um, make a straight edge. And I want to make a circle. So I'm going to sit this in the middle. And connect it, actually. I'm going to connect this in the middle. See, I just made it not square. I like it when it's square. So make sure it stays there. And then just pull it around into a circle. But it's actually a square. It's so cool. Like the metal, the black, whatever I'm trying to say. All right, I'm going to cut it right about here. And then I'm just going to coax it ne up next to that. It's a little big. But I like it. I'm just going to push down in the middle and make sure it's connected. It's actually hanging off. Can you see that? And I don't want to do that because I'll, I'll break it. So I'm just going to set it down here tack it down a little bit and then I'm going to take a little black you know what I'll do silver a little silver ball tiny little silver ball of clay and put it right in the middle and put a little um, this is too big I mean this is tiny teeny tiny and put it right in the center and use my toothpick and put a little dot and that's the doorknob so now we're going to start doing our vine and I've already gathered couple colors of greens that I want to use because I'm going to do greens, um, leaves, and a vine. And then we'll add flowers after. So I'm just gathering up my clay and getting it all organized again. Um, say I have all these colors of green. This I'm going to do this one for the vine. Or this one. I think that I think I'm gonna do this. This is a, these are whatever I had. I know this is the wasabi. I think this is called moss, and this is the glitter. And I don't know what color this is because, like I said, you saw my stash. I have clay from forever. So get it conditioned. That means soft, so you can work with it and make sure it'll move for you. And. I am going to roll out a snake. This time I'm just definitely going to roll it out. I'm not going to um, cut it. But if that's why I like a pasta machine too, because if your hands, if you have arthritis or anything, you can use your pasta machine to condition the clay. Because this is conditioning the clay. Just moving it, squishing it, squishing it on top of each other and making it soft. All right, so that's going to work. To pinch off a piece of clay and roll it out into a snake.
You don't want it too thick. Um, I can't tell you how thick to make it because I don't know, like in measurements language, what to tell you. But I start at the tip. Obviously, you're going to have it kind of in, it goes into a tendril at the tip, like a point. And it should get thicker as it goes, but it doesn't really matter. You can do it regardless. And I'm going to start, I'm going to just do it the way I've been doing it. I'm going to start over here and make a spiral. And I'm tapping with my thumb as I go to kind of stick it down. And then I'm going to twist and make a coil. And flatten it out a little and go back this way. And then we'll we'll make some spriggles come off of that. Kind of tap it down. Make sure it's stuck. And just curve it down to the bottom. And cut it right here. So that went well. And that's all I want right now. I'm going to add... Alright, let's continue. You can put a couple of spriggles, I call them. So more curly cues, but this is going to be thinner. Kind of coming out from the main vine. So, again, just set it down and push it to connect it and then just start making a swirl. It can actually overlap. I don't like it, it's too far away. All right, so that's the idea. I don't know how much you, you need to see on camera. It was too far away, I didn't like it. That's better. And I might coil this. Oh, I guess I won't because it won't coil for me. Just crisscross it. make sure it's stuck down because when we patina this you can pull it off well if you're me you can I'm gonna do a little bit more and then I'll come back and we'll do leaves okay I'm pretty happy with that it's a little thick but I don't mind I'm loving my purple door and I want to before we do anything else any other details I just want to add the grass to the bottom and we're gonna put our holes we're gonna um, cut some windows in here. Um, so let me show you how I do the grass. So I've just rolled out this scrap of clay. There's, I can tell there's some glitter in here. There's some light green. And I'm going to make a flat edge on the bottom. And we're going to just cut, let's see. I need it to be at least a half an inch high. And I'm just going to go kind of wavy. And I don't know why. It's kind of representing bushes and grass. And just, you know, it is what it is. I kind of like this part. You're going to take your votive and line this up right along the bottom. Actually, you know what I want to do first? You know what? Oh, hold on. I want to texturize this. So I don't have a grass, but I have this. I like this. is called waves. 
So I think I'm going to use that, and I'm going to go a little thinner, too. I don't want this to be... All right, sorry, I should have prepared better. But before you cut it to be how you want it, you should texturize first. I'll go back out a little. Because it distorts. When I press on this with the texture plate, it's going to distort. So I want my grass to go this way. Yeah. So I'm going to lay this down, take my roller, give it some pressure, pick it up, and do it again. And, oh, it's sticking. This clay is very, very warm. So, all right, I don't use any kind of baking powder. Some people use baking powder and stuff. And you shouldn't pull it off the tile like that either. You should use your blade to loosen it. All right, so now I'm going to cut a flat edge. And let's just divide it here since that's where it started. And I'm going to do the same thing with my... Uh, this is much thinner. So just kind of hold on to an edge of it. And really randomly about a half an inch to an inch tall. Boy, that's thin. And this, this isn't my sharpest exacto knife either, so that may have something to do with it. And then just lay this along the bottom. I, I want to make a step, I think, so that's why I'm kind of starting this away from the you might get some um, wrinkles or um, folds but that's okay just work it around and you know what I meant to pinch the top of it but you know what instead of pinching I'm just going to tack it down we're not going to see any of this bottom so you can just flatten out your folds because this is on the bottom of mine and I'll probably cover it up with a with a base so that's what that's looking like I need another little piece I think I like this side better Um, I can just overlap. I don't think I even need it that long. This is really thin. couldn't even see where it um, connected. All right, so now we're going to cut some holes for windows. What style of window do I want? You know, like, I saw one, when you watch the videos about it and stuff, uh, that it had shutters, which I thought looked really cool. And, I mean, they could be purple, right? We could do them the exact same way as, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to make square windows or rectangular windows. This might be too small. I'm just 
going to, I could just cut them freehand, but let me see if I have something that will help me make it the same size every time. Nope. Um, you can make a template. You could do whatever you need to do to make this uh, consistent, but I'm winging it. I'm going to freehand it, and I'm just going to do it about halfway up right here and I'm going to make it rectangular because I want each part of the shutter would come halfway right you know I'm an architect I'm a fairy house architect and you just take this off and I'll line that the way I did with the white and we'll put a shutter on each side, about, you know, halfway the size of the window. And now I want to go over here. You know what? I'm going to do three windows. I'm going to do one in the very back. So I'm going to do another one right here. Try to make it, I think, halfway. And... That is so crooked. A little taller. Um, I think it's crooked and bigger. Actually, it's not too bad. And I'm going to do one exit directly in the back. All right, I'll be right back. 